So, <laughs> this week's Parsha, we uh, find the uh, Parsha of uh, Galut, of uh, someone who murdered someone else accidentally. So then that person uh, goes to one of the cities of refuge and remains in Galut until the death of the Kohen Godel, etc. We'll read later in the Torah that Moshe Rabbeinu uh, set aside already three of the cities of uh, uh, the exile the three cities that were in Transjordan. Golan in the Bashan, Betzer in the Midbar, it's the, those were the cities he set aside. Eventually, when the Jews came to Eretz Israel, they set aside three more cities, this time east of the, I'm sorry, west of the Jordan River. <laughs> And <clears throat> Hebron and Shem and Kedesh Naphtali. So there were six. And the Gemara in Makkah says that Lossi Lovo, there'll be three more. We have a total of nine. But out of the six that were set aside, three are in Transjordan and three are in uh, Eretz Israel proper. So uh, the question is raised, Rashi raises it, based on the Torah's Kohanim. The Transjordan only had two and a half tribes. They had Bnei Gur, Bnei Ruvain, and Chatsi Shevet Menashe. The west side of the Jordan had nine and a half tribes, including the more numerous tribes. Don and Yehuda. So uh, why uh, this equal distribution of the cities of refuge when the populations are so unequal? So Rashi quotes the, uh, the words of the Torah's Kohanim. Uh, because uh, there's a posik uh, regarding Yoshe Gilad that those who lived in uh, Transjordan in the Fishe Rotschim, they had a higher rate of murder than those who lived on the western side of the Jordan. And so the question still arises that the populations were unequal. So the Gemara comes to teach us here a, a, a psychological import. That if there are, a, if there is a high rate, so to speak, of murder, even accidental murder in a community, psychologically life becomes cheap and therefore the likelihood of such accidents happening increases because people take it lightly. We hear in Israel all the time about uh, work accidents. It, uh, every week uh, there are incidents like that on a 
So since we accept that as being part of our society, and that if you want to build a uh, 25 story uh, skyscraper, uh, there you have to take into account that somebody's gonna fall down off the uh, ladder or the elevator and get killed. So life becomes cheap. It's factored into the cost of the building. And therefore people will be less careful simply because of the fact that they accept that the risk is there. And if the risk is there, so then the, statistically it will happen more times than when the risk is not there. So when the Gemara says, the Nefishe Rotschim, the Gemara is telling us the psychological fact that the two and a half tribes that lived on the east side of the Jordan River valued life less than the nine and a half tribes that lived on the west side of the river. And I'm forcing to say there are many reasons to say that. They were the uh, the people on the border, so to speak. They were exposed to the enemy all the time. That they were in a constant state of war. Not a war of the encroachment back and forth. In such environments, uh, people tend to accept the fact that we hear it all the time in our society. People tend to accept the fact that there'll be casualties, there'll be deaths. Yeah, that's just, uh, you know, part of everyday life. If that becomes the attitude, so then the likelihood of accidents increases. And because of the fact that we are not so careful to prevent uh, someone else's life from being endangered. Because I'll say on the post that we say all the time, what's pshat osay sholom bim romo? Makes peace in the heavens. Who's fighting in the heavens? So the Mephoshim say here a very deep thought. Osei Sholem Bim Romov is a psychological thing. If in our thoughts, if in our upper reaches of understanding, Sholem takes on a primary uh, position, so to speak. Then we ask say shalom aleinu, then here also we can have shalom. But if psychologically, spiritually, we don't have shalom, we don't deem it to be important. We deem other things to be important. So then the likelihood for uh, disagreement and then eventual violent disagreement increases. And all sorts of things can happen. So uh, the problem is how do you advocate for Sholem? How do you advocate for Sholem? The Chazal always saw it as a matter of tolerance of other people. Not a question of uh, defense or self-defense, which certainly is necessary, but a question of tolerance of other people. Uh, in our time, uh, Beishama and Beizila would have a difficult time to coexist because uh, the power of ideology is so strong 
that uh, it justifies all sorts of things uh, that eventually destroy Shalom. It becomes uh, such a polarized society. And that's what the Gavara means in Fisher wrote. It was an atmosphere of Ritzich where the idea that I have is so great that I'm willing to be violent against those who oppose it because I am so certain that I am right. And I'm so convinced that it's the correct thing to do that I leave no room for anyone else. The whole concept of Golas, Ramban points it out, was that a person should reflect. There was a question whether or not the people in Golas uh, were supported because they lived in the cities of the Levium. Aside from the six cities, there were 42 cities of the Levium that also served as Ori Miklot. So uh, the Levium were entitled to be supported. Nicer, other uh, public benefits, etc. cetera. Were the people who lived in the, uh, these cities, who were not Levium, they were the ones that were in Golas, were they also entitled to such support? So on one hand, you would say uh, they're not entitled because we don't want to reward people who have killed other people. But on the other side, we wanted to say that being in Golis was, so to speak, to cause a reflection in one's mind as to how one got there. To think about oneself and therefore supporting the person would be part of the rehabilitation of that person. So uh, the, the Ramban and the Sforn or others all look for deep psychological ideas as to what the purpose was here. What does the Torah want? So it's not only to separate killers from society. It's not only is a punishment, so to speak, but it is more than that. It is the fact that somehow the person himself has to uh, come back to himself. And that was the purpose of Golos. And therefore, that's why the Mephoshim explained that it was dependent on the Kohen Godel, because the Kohen Godel didn't was the height of that self-reflection. And as long as he was alive, then that was the model that they had to model themselves. If he passed away, they, so to speak, didn't have such a model anymore. And therefore, they were freed from Golas. So it was a very, very complex issue that the Mephorshim deal with, but it has ramifications for our time as well. And if we live, God forbid, in a violent society, then we can expect things will happen, even if we did not intend them to happen. Because, so to speak, it's in the air. It's part of the society. And we should therefore try to avoid it, perhaps at all costs. <laughs> Shinemra, the night of the eight months, it's going to be a good idea.